you're here with myself, JDLR, and pluginboutique.com. Plugin Boutique is a website which kind of offers like a supermarket for all your plugin needs. Uh, you can pick up all different types of things on there, instruments, effects. They offer good reviews and different videos to help you with your choices. Today in particular, we're going to have a look at a drum sampler called um, Addictive Drums. Addictive Drums is a very, very handy plugin to use um, because you can take a, a raw live drum sound and manipulate that sound uh, however you really want. Uh, I like Addictive Drums because it's a little bit more simple, uh, a little bit more simple than maybe BFD or um, Superior Drummer, uh, which is no bad thing, and you can still go very in-depth with your sound design. However, uh, the simplicity just helps you achieve better results faster, in my opinion. So we're going to have dive straight in, have a look at the features, then we're going to have a look at creating a quick break. In uh, this case, it's going to be drum and bass, and just how you can use Use the drum sampler to create your break and uh, manipulate the samples as you go along. So I'm going to try and give you a quick overview of Addictive Drums. Uh, look at its main features and the main features that I like to use and uh, show you how I'd make a quick drum and bass break with the, um, with the sampler. So it's laid out at the bottom with your faders. It's got kick, snare, hi-hat, extra, which is uh, any sort of extra percussion that you want to add to this kit. They've got tom one, two, and three, and four. Um, you can edit each of them um, by clicking them here, and it gives you the view at the top. Or you can be more specific if you want to edit each individual symbol, uh, which um, actually are controlled by the overheads. Um, level meter or the room depending if you've got them sent there and then um, you can select each of your toms and any other drum from there as well as well as click through the different drums and it actually keeps your uh, your EQ setting your envelope setting when you actually click through the various presets so I'm going to have a quick listen to this so just a very basic drum and bass break Hi-hat's programmed in with some velocity to get the difference between the two. Kick a little bit softer, and the softer velocity actually just gives you... You, you can still have some power there, but it, it just gives you the more muted sound. And you can hear that if I just bring the velocity up here. So, which is quite cool. I quite like it hard, but also... The soft velocity seems to work nicely as well. So having a look at the kick here. I've sorted out the envelope here so that the decay um, and sustain is less, else, it, else the, you, you find that the kick tends to ring out a bit. And you can just control that by bringing those those individual parameters down. You can control them a bit more specifically down here. But also you can just grab hold of the envelope and, and, and move it around how you please. Got a little bit of attack there to sort of the transient click out at the start. And also the filter is very handy. It just helps you focus the energy into a specific area um, and you still will get some of the click from the kick because you've got some of that kick going to the room. And also to the overhead which I've actually um, sort of taken down for this particular mix. Just because I find that um, the overheads can be good, but also um, occasionally, you know, sometimes when you have too many mics, you're dealing with more phase uh, differences and phase cancellation. So just taking them away can just help you get a cleaner sound. I'm not using the bus for any of these drums in here, actually, at the moment. So I'm going to add a bit now while we're here.
So what I'm actually doing here with the overheads are um, busting them out, and it's actually a pre-fader send. So the fader's down, and the overheads are all coming to the bus. And that's what's to help creating that layer and the chunk um, behind, the, behind the mix, but avoiding any overhead mix in there. You can see on the snare, I've done a similar thing to the kick, just to sort out, because it's drum and bass specifically, you know, sometimes, well, a lot of the time, you want everything a lot tighter and a lot snappier. So I've tried to do that by taking the envelopes down and making each individual hit much snappier, which is also really handy when you're going to be dealing with compression um, and generally smashing your sounds later on to get more level and uh, more aggression in there. And it helps to have them tighter. And then when you start smashing them later on, they, they hold up a little bit better. You can hear when you just control that attack at the front of the hits that it just helps to smooth out the clicks and give them a much more uh, smooth, more natural sound instead of it being very clicky um, and a little bit abusive to the ear. I am using the compressor in certain areas on this beat. Uh, it is on the master output. It is isn't on the bus send. It is on the uh, overheads, but remember the, the, the raw mix is turned down. Um, however, it is on the kick, and you can definitely hear a difference when I take it off. just helps to give you more transient control, shape the sound, um, and give it more punch and pop at the start. I like the compressor and uh, addictive drums. It does look very simple. It's not very visually exciting, but that, that doesn't mean everything. The, the sound of it is quite good, although you find when you're playing with a threshold, uh, occasionally uh, it's a little bit strange. It does react a little strange. However, a lot of the time you are dealing with low signal levels. As you can see, so often you have to bring that threshold quite far down. Using the distortion on the hats there, um, as well as the bus, just like you saw a minute ago when I was playing with that, um, the, the distortion on the hats just helps to thicken it out. The uh, you've got a crunch distortion, heavy distortion, zap distortion, bit crush distortion, and then you can focus that distortion in a, in a specific frequency area, or, and then as well you can do a mix on there and the amount, um, which really helps you to sort of control the amount of distortion that you have in certain areas, and also focus frequencies and and and, and you know. So here I wanted to add more um, crunch and, and and aggression in that top end to try and. Um, bring more of a, a high crunch out in, in the hat. And then also I'm emphasizing that by using the filter, which is a main filter on the output, to just really control where those frequencies are hitting. If you want to control your individual room and overhead levels, so how much hi hats going to the overhead? How much rides going to the um, going to the overheads or the room? You can just click on whichever you know. If you wanted to do it to a symbol, you have to go here to this um, layout, and you can control the amount that that your symbol is is feeding to the overhead which is very handy uh, just to you know control each individual symbol in the mix what i was playing around with on on this beat was a bit of camel fat just cuz the compressor can sound very interesting you can use a bit of distortion and then Air Windows 2 tape. Okay, so that's a little overview of addictive drums. Um, I went through a couple of features that I like to use and that you might like to use also. Remember, if you want to get this plugin, you can get it off of pluginboutique.com. Oh, 